Hey everyone, Martin here. Today I'm going to be doing another react video. Today I'm going to be reacting to Ruby Volume 4, Episode 10, Kiri Yuri. It's going to be a Ren-based episode considering the thumbnail and the Twitter teasers that I saw on, well, Twitter. So yeah, I'm really excited for this episode and yeah, by all the way, let's get started. I'll leave Rooster T's channel, video, well, yeah, Rooster T's YouTube channel, website, the original video, and the Ruby playlist so you can watch this all for yourself. But all the way, let's all get started with this. Sorry if I stutter, but yeah. Also, got my Ruby hat now. And just uh, enter this song. Well, nearing the end of volume four. Might as well just put it on. Got a couple buttons on here, but yeah, I feel like it'd be good to start wearing. Oh, it's easier to just be from Yeah, I had not memorized this, so eh. Cool. So based on that, you see. Well, I'm going to go based on the Twitter teaser before we get into this episode. It seems that Kiri Yuri was uh, where Ren came from. Because I don't consider it spoilers. I consider it a little info beforehand. If, if I don't want to learn about it, I'll stay away from it. I don't want to stay away from it, so it's not spoilers for me. Uh... Yeah, so it's going to be excited to see that. Ren's family. Uh, I don't really know much else about the episode aside from the brief view of Ruby and Jean that goes into the back, the flashback. But yeah, let's get on with this. Let's just live. Let's go. Starting with Oscar. Oh, he's actually leaving the farm. You had a voice in your head, wouldn't you think so? Oh, wait. Train station. Oh, hey, you look familiar. It's weird seeing him. Oh, hey, Hazel. Remembered his name now. Oh, Kiri Yuri. There we go. That, that flag. Once you see the episode, you'll know what I'm talking about, but that flag have like the little lotus thing like Ren has. So it's clear. This is this is his hometown. On the bottle too. We got a little Ren pin right here too. I 
and you have to think. This is all usually. Well, considering most of this stuff is traditional, like ancient, like buildings, I wouldn't see how you living in a futuristic city would know what a pharmacy looks like. And bridge, little lotus, and really bad. Flashback. Sorry, you won't get the overdose reaction of Rand, but. I already saw this, it looks funny. It looks cute. Um, <laughs> he sounds cute. <laughs> uh, it's not like that bad of a town. Fuck about this. You're, I mean, isn't sake like an alcoholic drink? So him buying that would kind of look, well, give it the wrong idea. Oh my god, it's Nora. Gee, I wonder why. Yeah, weird to you is normal to someone else. Oh, you get the beard. What is happening here? Better run, jerks. You mean you wish to run from the rest of them? Sometimes the worst action to take. Jeez, you got disciplined. Thank you. 
Put this down. I, I just want to. I want to clap. I don't want to put this down. Jeez. Excuse me, what? Pardon me, Bob. Jeez. Mom's gone. Oh, God, you're bleeding. The crap. The, one horse grim. Two. There's a rider. Jeez, he's not more bleeding up here. He gets stabbed. Seriously, can we just talk about for a second? Horse Grim? Oh, there's a Nevermore. Wow. He just unlocked his aura. Wow. Hey,
no sabe nada. Thanks for tearing up in that last scene. I mean, jeez. I need some breath. Uh, a symbol. Holy Mary, Mother of Joseph. Ugh. Rooster Teeth. I hate you and I love you at the same time. Well, that was certainly an episode of Ruby. And volume three flash flashback great. And you're done. Well, what to talk about that one? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna focus on like the Renora part of it. Yes. Uh because Oscar that was that was kind of like a minor thing they threw in just to show that, uh, that, sorry if I'm chopping a lot, it's just, well, yeah, can't help burps and stuff, but, yeah, Oscar, that just, his part just showed him that he was leaving his town, that he was leaving the farm, going into the city, that he knows that Hazel is part of Ozpin's past. That is a very notable thing to remember for future volumes. Uh, Ruby and Jean, that's just like the way to integrate the flashback scenes, but it also showed that there's development between them, that Ruby taking a step to show action made the rest of Team Juniper to follow. I mean, Jean said himself, I don't remember, like you said, I'm not going to look that up, looking back. But he said it himself that he, that they followed. They didn't, Ruby didn't force him to come. That they followed her. Because they lost so much, and despite everything that they lost, they're still going. So that's a lot to mention, but, small things to mention, but it's a lot of words and, I don't know the word for it, but I guess in development for them. 
in that scene, but... The flashbacks with Nora and Ren. My god. The feels. Okay, first we have... Ren discovering his aura, because we saw that happening. Uh... The way his parents died. I mean, mother, his mother was, like, trying to take care of him, and he was knocked unconscious while she died from the roof collapsing. His father died in an act of bravery, def trying to defend his son with, uh, from the horse grim, going to call it. Uh, I, belie I believe that it was called a nightmare, based on one of his, this person's, like, fan stories online, because... He has, like, tons of names for different Grimm that haven't existed, like, uh, Xenoslayer for a dragon, uh, Nemean for a lion, and Nightmare for a horse. But, I'm just gonna call it Grim Horse, because that's an unofficial official name. Uh, other than that, really, I don't know what else to say, but, with the Grim Horse and everything, that's kind of... I'm left speechless. Like I don't know how to describe it. Um, I'm really curious what, how, or sorry if I'm like starting to stutter or come up with words being sound, but it's just after that episode, I have lots to talk about. It's just talking the words out. I, I'm just wondering how the why were the warriors there? Like it wasn't obviously to slay it, but. Purpose-wise, why specifically were they there? And obviously they're from Shion because of the tar flag thing, but why Shion? Like, it might have been that they, people who escaped wanted revenge on the thing that uh, destroyed their town. And... Well, you know, destroy their town, everything they loved, and they just wanted revenge for it, and they failed miserably, sadly. But clear, it's clear that the thing is still alive after like fifth, I don't know, ten plus years, maybe, based on Ren and Nora at their ages. But the question is, where is it going? Because I don't know if it's going to. Because based on where it was, the village was a longer way but it was away from the mountains and it showed the ending scene with a village with the trees moving towards it uh so that might it might be going towards john and ruby to cure yuri but that's undetermined and yet to be well determined but what i'm wondering about is why his father why ren's father's arrow was still there because well, clearly it would have been just lodged in him, he just, the rim, they'd be smart enough to just take it out and drop it, but other than that, it's not much. Um, Ren and, Ren and Nora holding hands in the end. Shipping. That's all I have to say. Um, but another neat touch that I noticed was Ren, the knife that Lee, which is Ren's father's name, that we gave to Ren, it was the actual shape of the, like the knife things on the end of it, Ren's guns, like in, well, modern day as Ruby. It's the same shape because you can see like the little curve to it, and then it goes to the point. So, that I find that very, uh, well, it's a nice touch first of all, but I found like that's a really deep connection that we never noticed, well, never known until now that. Ren still technically carries a part of his family with him. Like, as long as he has his weapon, he carries his family with him at all times. Other than that, nothing really much else with the episode. I like with the hammer that he gave to Nora. I feel like that's how she got the her weapon style, which just basically just the world's best player of whack-a-mole. But not to jokes aside, that's overall very serious episode. Uh, like, I'm talking like half, second half, volume three, serious. But yeah. Other than that, 
nothing much else to say. Yes. Thank you all so much for watching this reaction to episode 10 of Ruby Volume 4. If you liked it, make sure to like the video. Comment down below that you did. Share this video with a friend if you think you liked it too. Make sure to comment down hashtag Ruby Rules. You all know this by now. But nothing much else to say. Can we also put hashtag Renora in the comments below just because shipping and I mean, let's be honest, they work really good together. Um, yeah, I have nothing else about that. So, until ne next time, I guess I'll see you guys later. See ya.